begin today with the 23rd Psalm. Please read responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hello, neighbor. I'm so glad that you're joining us for this online worship opportunity. This weekly video is an offering from Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. Heart of Illinois Lutheran includes two congregations in north central Illinois. Emmanuel Lutheran, which is south of the small town of Compton, and First Lutheran, which sits in the center of the town of Lee. My name is Jeff Schlesinger. I am the pastor at Heart of Illinois Lutheran. You are always welcome to worship with us. We, we'd love to have you join us in person. We gather each Sunday at Emmanuel at 8.30 a.m. and at first at 10.30 a.m. We produce these online videos so that those unable to join us in person are able to stay tied into our faith community. We work hard to create videos that help you feel as if you are with us in person incorporating the voices of many of our members and utilizing the same and similar liturgy as we do on Sunday morning. You will find the liturgy printed on the screen so that you can participate. The regular print is for the leader, while we invite you to respond with what appears in bold. We also provide the words for the music so that you can sing along. Welcome to worship, dear friend. We are overjoyed that you are with us. We now continue with worship, seeking a word of forgiveness from our loving God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
brothers and sisters, Jesus died for you and forgives your sins. It is my privilege to tell you that all of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherded my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply, multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will, sh who will shepherd them and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, in, in his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The second reading today is from Ephesians chapter 2. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at the time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Here end the readings. Our Holy Gospel today is from the sixth chapter of Mark. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. 
for many were coming and going, and they, they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So in 1982, I got on a plane with two youth uh, from Calvary Lutheran Church in Lee and uh, one youth from another church. I don't even remember what church she was from. And together we made one group and we went to the American Lutheran Church National Youth Gathering in San Antonio, Texas. For all of us, it was a very memorable week uh, and a big part of our life. I bring that up not because I'm going to tell you all about that. I bring that up because uh, the youth gatherings uh, that the Lutherans have been doing for many years are, are a big part of the life at Emmanuel Lutheran. And because of that, I am absent this week. Those of you who are watching this video uh, while you're sitting in church, you know already that I'm not there in church. Uh, those of you watching online uh, don't realize I'm gone for the weekend, but I have traveled uh, to the ELCA Youth Gathering in New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, with our youth uh, this week. And this is, uh, Emmanuel has been sending groups for 24 years to the National Youth Gatherings. It's become a longstanding tradition, a very special uh, event uh, for our young people. You're not going to hear from the youth uh, that I accompanied this week, but what I've done is I've talked to some of the alumni uh, from those trips. Uh, going all the way back to 2000, the first trip that Emmanuel went on, uh, and from the years uh, covering some of the years uh, in between. Uh, I've talked to those alumni, and, and they shared with me their experiences. Uh, so today, uh, rather than a traditional sermon, I just share with you uh, some of the reflections uh, from alumni from the ELCA Youth Gathering. Thank you guys for uh, agreeing. Uh, if you could just introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about the uh, when, when and where you went for your, uh, your youth gathering. Absolutely. I'm Charlotte Eames, maiden name Erickson. At the time of our youth gathering, which was in 2000, um, my dad, Gary Erickson, was the pastor at Emmanuel, and he and my mom chaperoned our group of about 15 kids to the youth gathering in St. Louis. And I'm Brandon Eames and went to the uh, same gathering in St. Louis in 2000. So you guys were handpicked because, to my knowledge, you're the only youth gathering couple that we have. <laughs> I don't know if you're dating when you started or not, but um, we were, but very shortly thereafter. Oh, so maybe something did bud at the gathering, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. So, oh boy. Okay. My name's Nick Gon Gons. I uh, I went to two. I went to uh, San Antonio in 2006 and New Orleans in 2009, and my chaperones, I think both times my mom went, and then the one time was Connie Schlesinger, and the other time was Diane Englehart. So that's, those are the chaperones. And then I don't think, I don't think we had a pastor with us either time now that I think about it. 
can't remember if we did, I guess. Um, we got there. Both times we went by plane. I remember the San Antonio trip was kind of weird. That was kind of, it wasn't my first time on a plane, but it was definitely one of the first times on a plane. And, you know, you think of a plane as a big, you know, three seats on both sides and whatever else. Well, that one, we had connecting flights both ways. So we actually had to get on these little, little planes. It was like a three seater. So it was two seats on one side and one seat on the other side. And it was actually weird because they had to, you know, it wasn't a full flight, so they were stretching people out and moving people to different spots for weight distribution. So that was that was interesting. You know, we we thought that was pretty funny when people were getting moved around. So on uh, sizes, our groups we were probably fifteen ish each time, if I had to remember. Probably close to that with chaperones. So airports were interesting with fifteen kids. I'm Emily Cook, formerly Emily Roth, um, and I attended the 2015 Youth Gathering um, as a youth, and then um, I really enjoyed my time there, so I ended up volunteering as a servant companion um, when I was in college for the 2018 gathering. Um, so the 2015 gathering was in Detroit, and the 2018 Youth Gathering was in Houston. For the... 2015 gathering um, there were quite a few of us that went um, I believe we had three chaperones um, there was quite a few of us and we took the um, Amtrak train to Detroit and then um, for Houston I actually um, I met up with the group of youth that were going at the time from our church um, but I actually flew out there by myself because I did have to be there for a full week to um, prepare for volunteering. Um, so I was actually staying with a um, totally new group of people that I didn't know when I went out for the volunteering one. Um, and I had a roommate and everything. Um, and then I was able to meet up with Emmanuel's youth um, towards the end of the trip. Uh, how about a memorable story or two uh... And I leave that wide open, whatever kind of story you want to tell. You were I'll start with the New Orleans in 2009. I, that one, mem the most memorable thing about that was it was four years after the hurricane hit, you know. So that was kind of the big deal of why we were down there, kind of boosting the economy and just seeing the the aftermath even four years later was insane. You know, you don't think about it here, you know. You, here you see, hear about a tornado or something go through, and it's like, ah, it went through, but it didn't hit much, you know. But down there, I mean, the hurricane, we took a bus trip, and it just, it was amazing to see how how high the water had gotten, I guess. Because, you know, just how, how much damage it actually did. So, you know, that's what's weird, you know, with the hurricane that just went through. You know, that that's what crosses my mind now. every time I see a hurricane now is like, how bad is it going to be? Because it was, I mean, there's water, I mean, essentially taller than my house, you know. You know that, that and that just kind of opened your eyes when you saw how high it actually was that was probably the most memorable thing about new orleans and that was kind of one of them we had fun but it wasn't anything i guess that, that stuck out more than that you know just the city was fun and everything but just seeing the the aftermath of the hurricane was insane and then san antonio was actually a really fun trip because that was that was kind of, you know, one of the first times to get away as a kid and go do something fun. Well, that turned into somehow one of us, I, it might have been me, now that I think about it. You know, I walking past somewhere and I saw a pink cowboy hat. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm going to get one of them. So I put that on and wore it. And the next day, every person in our group was wearing a pink cowboy hat. So we were, you know, everybody started recognizing us and knowing us as the pink cowboy hat guys. We had to wear them everywhere we went that week. So that was kind of cool just to, you know, everybody kind of saw us coming and got excited when they saw us like we were celebrities. It was, it was a little odd, but looking back, it was kind of cool. The thing that stands out to me, um, you know, it's been 24 years ago, and so some of the memories are vague now, but what really does stand out to me is just the, the friendships that were, you know, either um, begun or just deepened. Um, I was sharing a room with two of, of my best friends at the time. And so just having an opportunity to share that experience uh, with, with those people 
um, and to really deepen those relationships and then also to really form some new relationships with people who um, I hadn't known that well um, going into the trip. So that that's what stands out to me. Yeah, um, something that was memorable from the 2015 gathering was um, definitely the um, big worship services at night. Um, it was almost like a concert feel. We were in a big, um, almost like concert arena. Um, so that was really cool to see everybody from all the different churches. Um, and we would also pass out things to each other. A lot, a lot of churches brought, brought like um, buttons or bracelets or things like that to exchange with each other. So when we went home, we had quite a few of those. Other churches brought like um, buttons or um, I think a couple of churches brought like clothespins with their information on it. So basically it's kind of like a friendship bracelet um, concept where you bring something that represents your church to pass out to other churches. Um, so I, I would definitely recommend bringing something this year, whether it's like a, a button or you guys could make something to exchange. But um, it is really cool to then be able to come home with all these different um, items that kind of tell you about different churches um, around the country. And um, also if you met new friends, it can kind of help you remember them as well. Um, and then for the 2018 gathering, um, I spent most of my time leading um, groups of youth um, through volunteer opportunities. So that was really cool. Um, I got to do service projects almost every day. So that was one of my favorite things from the first gathering. So um, when I did the volunteer, I knew that I wanted to be in charge of the service projects um, more of the time. So um, that was really cool to get to lead um, groups of people through like cleaning up parks and um, debris and things like that. Yeah, so it's funny you mentioned that. So I was going to mention that uh, the uh, gathering worked out for me. Um, results may vary, but I ended up for the first time really getting to uh, know my future wife at that <laughs> event. <laughs> so like we'd known each other since, you know, fifth grade or so when her family moved there, but that was the first time that we'd actually really gotten to know each other. So, uh, so I mean, I, I can't complain. It's worked out pretty well for me. <laughs> but we did start dating within a few months after that, I think. What's some of the most uh, uh, most inspirational things that you had at one or both of the gatherings? Um, so definitely the big worship services that I mentioned earlier, that definitely – was really cool um, to see all these different congregations worshiping together in one place is really cool. Um, and then I think also just um, talking with different groups of people because you are with lots of different groups of people from around the um, United States. So it is kind of cool to hear um, how their church does things and also just meet new people. Um, especially when I was a volunteer, I met lots of new friends. We actually still have a Facebook group today that we probably chat in once a month, at least, um, just with that close group of like 10 volunteers that work together. So it is a really good way to meet new people and you could create, um, long lasting friendships from it as well. Yeah. I think the, the biggest thing was, uh, you know, coming from small town Illinois, like all of a sudden you're showing up in this place that's, uh, you know, a huge arena packed with other students, you know, other high school kids from all over the country. Um, so, I mean, you know, showing up and, uh, and seeing this many people all there that probably, even though they come from very different, you know, we were little town, I'm sure others were from big cities and so on, but, um, you know, we've all, I'm sure had, uh, you know, similar experiences growing up, um, you know, in the church. And uh, I, I, I can remember um, there was like a certain area within the arena that was set up with like games and different activities and things that you were kind of weaving through these like aisles of, of those things that were set up. Um, so, you know, having thousands of, you know, us from all over the place that were all, you know, kind of, jointly interested and entertained by the same, you know, type of activities, you know, from all these different, different places and different backgrounds. Like I do remember kind of 
thinking in that moment, like kind of how interesting that was, I guess, that, uh, you know, farm kid from nowhere, Illinois, and then who knows from whoever else, we're all there doing the same stuff together. So that was, that was kind of a neat experience for sure. Um, probably both of them were just the fact of seeing that many people in one spot kind of celebrating it and like seeing how you know you think sometimes you think you're kind of on an island you know out here especially where we're at you know out here we're the only ones out here that think about this or believe in the same kind of things and then you go down there and there's how many thousands of people and they all have the same beliefs and you know doing the same things and it, it's weird how you can go from not ever knowing anybody to all of a sudden, you know, you're all in the same spot and everybody gets along so well, you know, it's not like a, a battle or a, you know, he said, she said, or like a, oh, this is right. No, this is right. You know, everybody, everybody there believes in the same thing. So that, that was pretty cool. I mean, just seeing everybody and how everybody comes together under one roof, basically. Yeah, for me, it was um, Desmond Tutu. So he was speaking at our uh, gathering. And, um, you know, we were young, we were in high school. I don't know, you know, that we had a really strong awareness of, you know, who Desmond Tutu was or, or, you know, what he was involved with. But of course, we learned that. Um, And then he spoke to us. And while I don't remember the theme of the speech or exactly what he said, I do remember feeling really inspired once I understood who he was. And I I kind of remember feeling like, I can't believe this guy is here talking to us. Uh, Like we must be something special for him to have come here and talk to us. Um, And and so just being in that space and, and having that opportunity was a really inspiring moment. Uh, and finally, uh, what difference has the youth gathering made in your faith and life? Well, like I said before, just the fact of knowing that there's that many people out there in the same same boat, I guess, as us, you know. And it was one of them, it kind of brought, you know, the, the people we went with, you know, we, we all have that bond now that we went and did this together, you know, especially the kids in my group, you know, there was there was five of us that went on both trips, you know, so that's kind of something we're going to have, you know, we can always talk about or, Hey, you remember this or, you know, that, you know, so that's, that's kind of cool. Just the fact that, you know, we always have that. And I guess that's the big thing. Like I, you know, just, just having the memories of going to it, you know, it's kind of one of the things like, like I was telling you, you know, trying to plan a vacation. It's like, Oh, we should have went, we should go to San Antonio. Oh, I remember when I was there. That was really fun. You know, that, that was a good time. We should go back there. Or, or you know, we went to new Orleans a couple of years ago on vacation, just, just two of us. And it was like, Oh, I remember that, you know, that was cool. And this, we did this here, you know, we went there, we did this. And so it was just kind of cool to see. And they're just kind of cool to have that memory of everything. And just like I say, having everybody that, you know, you knowing that there's that many more people out there that you have no idea that, you know, this, the ELCA is that big in, in the country. Like, you know, you, you don't think of it when you're coming from Compton, and you know, out here in the boondocks, basically, you just, you think, oh, this is just our little thing. And then you go there and it's like, holy cow, you know, I'm essentially connected to all these people in a way. Uh, for me, a huge part of my faith uh, is about being part of a community of believers and, and having that, that space with, with a, a community of people who, who share that faith. Um, and I think that that notion first came to me at, at the Youth Gathering. I think that's where that kind of sunk in for me, uh, that that was uh, something that that um, just really, really moves me about my faith and being part of that community. And I think it was those moments, and Brandon talked about just how many uh, people were there and we hadn't experienced anything like that before with that many people coming together with uh, this shared faith and, and building that community. And that has been something for me um, on my faith journey, as I have, um, you, you know, become an adult and 
um, grown into my faith, it has really been about finding that community um, and and that just that just beautiful safe space to be with with other people who share that faith. Uh, so I think that's just where that started to sink in for me and has been a big part of my faith journey since then. Um, so I, you know, similar to, I guess, what I said before, where, uh, like, I don't have a ton of individual specific memories, but, but like, big takeaway was, you know, so many people being there from so many places. So, you know, we grew up in a town of less than 8,000 people, and now we're talking about pretty, pretty nearly triple the population of our town. Uh, you know, in, in one building, you know, for one reason. Um, so, I mean, that was, that was pretty incredible to, uh, to experience just on its own. Um, but with all those people, you know, depending on where we were coming from, I bet we still all had lock-ins at church. We did, uh, you know, uh, adopt a highway, you know, clean up blocks with our LYO groups, um, you know, ice cream socials, like no matter where we were coming from, like, I bet we all still had pretty similar experiences like in, you know, church life growing up, no matter where that was. Um, so, I mean, with that, I think, uh, you know, since that time with us having lived in other parts of the, the, the country and stuff, um, I think the takeaway from that is you've got a lot of people spread all over um, that have very similar beliefs and personal values uh, and things to you. So, you know, with us having moved away from, from Illinois, um, you know, it doesn't seem like you've got the same group of people, uh, that we grew up with, but you might just have to look a little bit, um, you know, people with similar backgrounds and similar values are probably somewhere nearby. You just might have to find. Them. Um, I will say it definitely, um, showed me that I do really enjoy volunteering. Um, I have, Currently, my husband and I, we volunteer at the homeless shelter up here, um, and the um, we volunteer at the one in Aurora. Um, we do that every couple months when the church that we're a part of now um, volunteers there, and um, it just kind of showed me that that is something that's really uh, makes me feel good is volunteering, um, especially for those that are less fortunate, so that is definitely something that the youth gathering, especially being a volunteer, really showed me. Um, but even as a youth, when I went and I um, participated in the service projects, it kind of opened my eyes to the fact that not everybody has it um, as easy of a life as uh, maybe I did growing up. So it's nice to um, see how other people go through life as well and, and um, appreciate what you have as well. made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pause briefly before we conclude the service with the prayers and final blessing and invite you to engage more fully with the ministry of Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, our weekly worship schedule includes Sunday morning worship at 8.30 a.m. at Emmanuel and 10.30 a.m. at First. We'd love to have you join us in person as you are able. These online worship services usually are posted on YouTube on Saturday evenings and are available to you whenever it fits your schedule. There are additional activities and ministries at Heart of Illinois in which we would love to include you. Our weekly calendar announcements can be found on our websites. Please check those out. We hope that you find this worship video inspiring and edifying to your faith. We do invite you to help support our ministry at Heart of Illinois Lutheran by making a monetary offering to our mission. Both of our websites contain links for giving, and Venmo is also an option if that is a medium that you utilize. Otherwise, good old-fashioned snail mail or dropping it off in person works as well. Any amount you are able to offer is much appreciated and will help us continue to go forth in mission, including producing these videos. Once again, thanks so much for joining us for worship. We are overjoyed at your presence with us. We continue now with our offering song, The Prayers, and the Final Blessing. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious, gracious and, merciful, and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. One in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. For the church of Jesus Christ in this and every land, through the one who is the cornerstone of a firm foundation, join us together and build us up as a temple of mercy and peace. In your mercy, hear our prayer. For the creation, cause new trees to be planted, restrain the melting of polar ice caps, Save land from destruction, like a shepherd tends to her sheep. Raise up from among us caretakers of all you have made. In your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the leaders of nations and heads of tribes, where peace seems far off, bring it near. Where justice seems fleeting, bring it light. Where discord seems relentless, bring harmony. In your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the health and well-being of family, friends, and neighbors, heal those who are sick. Give courage to all who struggle with addiction. Touch with your tender care all who reach out to you in pain. In your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. For this assembly and for the faith communities represented this week at the ELCA Youth Gathering, 
Nurture the faith of young people as they encounter new experiences and people. Break down dividing walls and inspire collaboration among people of every age. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for those who have died, make us certain that in Christ we are no longer strangers and aliens, but citizens with the saints in the household of God. In your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered as one in the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear siblings in Christ, the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.